Dan Chide from Liquid Force Kites and today we're going to be talking about the brand new Mission Control V3. So for those of you that are familiar with our control systems, we've had the Mission Control on the line. Um, this is our third iteration of the Mission Control bar. The original goals of the Mission Control system was to make a bar that is extremely lightweight easy to use and has no bells and whistles or unnecessary additions, just a really functionally clean, simple, lightweight bar. And we've continued some of the construction methods all the way through the V3, as well as added some new features to make the bar easier to use and a little bit more friendly on um, the user. So first and foremost, we'll start down here with the chicken loop. This is one thing we're really happy about um, making and engineering. Julian Fillion did a lot of work on this to make a simple system that's really easy to engage and release. So we have a standard push away release system that allows you to open your chicken loop, flag out your kite with a through the bar flagging line that takes 100% power safely out of your kite and allows you to relaunch your kite. Now something that's unique about our quick release system is you notice the hood stayed in the up position and that's because we have a ge uh, geometrically weighted key that kind of allows itself to stay open when the when the chicken loop is released in the upward position which is kind of 99 percent of when you release your chicken loop now to put this back together all you simply need to do is grab anywhere on the bar except on this red piece because this red piece actually has to slide up to be able to relock in. So I just grab anywhere on the bar that's not on it, I grab the key firmly with my index finger and I push it firmly into the thing. Oh, and, oh man, that's a satisfying sound. And even has a little bit of sand and grit in there from being here down in La Ventana on the gritty sand beaches and it's been working great. So if for some reason you happen to push it up and you're upside down when you hit your release, you'll notice the weighted key does not keep the hood up. In that case, you can either hold it up like a traditional lift, plug and let down, or you can simply turn the whole chicken loop back into the vertical position, hold it up, the pin will drop into place, the hood will stay up, grab it firmly. Remember, don't touch anywhere on the red release hood and push the chicken loop back in. Now we have this stainless steel ring down here that gives some people different options if they do want to hook their leash to somewhere for doing handle pass tricks or just don't want their kite to flag every time they come off the bar, you can go ahead and do this. When you do hit your release, this ring will slide off this chicken loop and will still give you that 100% safety. We have our safety pin here. It is uh, rotatable so that you can rotate it in to be in the way of the chicken loop when you're using it. And for those of you that don't want to use it, you can rotate it out of the way. It's really soft and flexible. It doesn't come unhooked. It, it stops you from foul hooking. We also have a small um, little loop down here and that's just to keep the bar nice and close to your body when you're using the kite. And most kiteboarders actually don't do unhook tricks. We have a bar specifically for those people. Um, so this loop services the most standard amount of people. Working up, you can see we've integrated in a full rotatable rotor head on the bar. So that allows you to unspin your center lines after doing a bunch of down loops or kite loops, or if you're doing a lot of front rolls or back rolls to one side without getting those line twists out, it allows you to manage those line twists. Now a new thing for this year is a material called Lubrizol. We used it in the application on the um, center line tube. Not only is this material softer and smoother on your hands and the bar when it's wet, it's also extremely flexible. So it makes putting that main line tube bar away really easy. It um, is strong and reduces, uh, um, is resistant to wear and abrasion resistance, but it still works really well and it's really smooth and silky. Now the biggest thing about that is because a lot of these bars with the center line tube, when you try to sheet in and out, it's really important you have that smooth functionality. If you turn your bar really aggressively and try to sheet out, it can pinch the tube in a tight S, kind of like this, and that will stop you from being able to turn and sheet at the same time. Well, you can see with this Lubrizol tube, it's so bendy and flexible that I'm able to kind of just push through that and that you don't really have those bind points when you're sheeting in and out and turning at the same time. So that's really important. That's a softer, smoother material. 
Now, as we get up to our bar, we're using a similar bar that we used in the MCV2 application. It's a single one piece molded plastic bar. It's injected in one whole piece. What this allows us to do is not only make a strong that is really, or make a bar that is really strong, it's also extremely lightweight. So that was one of the big design goals for the, for the mission control is we wanted it to be lightweight easy to use, you know, every little pound adds up when you're traveling as a kiteboarder and um, making something lighter just means it's a lot easier to lift and use and turn and steer. That bar is then inlaid with a stainless steel insert in here that uh, reduces the amount of wear that you get to this piece here. The bar is also ergonomically shaped in that it's rounded all the way here and straight next to the center line and thinned out here into the ends. Now we went with a really narrow diameter on the bar and that's important because the bigger you have to grip something, the more fatiguing it is on your hands, especially those of you that ride in cold water environments where you need to wear a pair of gloves on top of your bar. So we wanted to go with a really thin bar grip, thus being less fatiguing. And on top of that, we've wrapped a very thin and smooth skin EVA. Now this EVA, is actually really grippy when it's in the water. We found that you didn't need a lot of texture on the bar to achieve that you know, grippy feel. And all that texture is just unnecessary weight or stuff that can peel off. Um, so for us, it's really important that we have a small, thin, grippy application of EVA. For those of you that have been following the MCV3, you can see we have changed the colors for this year. We have gone with a gray and red. And that's just to make it really clear for those of you that are new to kiteboarding or in a school application, which side is the left side. Red is the left. That's how the slowly becoming the industry standard. And we wanted to fit into those ISO specs that allow the bars to be considered safe across the board. Um, moving down to the bar ends, we have an adjustable bar end. Now in my hands, I have the large MC V3 bar. It comes from a 49 to a 55 in adjustment. We have a smaller one that also goes from 40 to 46, and I'm gonna show you how we're able to do that. So just by sliding up the float here just a little bit, we have a cartridge down here in the end of the bar that you can pop right out. Right now it's at the 55 cm setting. By turning it around, you can see I put the line to the inside down to the 49 cm setting. I'm gonna slide it in. Notice in the top here we have a slotted channel, so that slotted channel allows that line to actually move from the outside to the inside, giving a 6 cm of adjustment just by uh, rotating those cartridges around. So for those of you that maybe got a large bar with your 15 meter, you can also you know, put it smaller if you want that kite to turn a little bit slower, you wanna use it on your 12. And then, like I said, we have a smaller board uh, bar, 40 to 46, with a similar adjustment. So I'm gonna go ahead and rotate this back so I make sure to keep it even. Now these things will work really reasonably well, but if they do get filled with sand and salt, you know, they're gonna get stuck just like any other part. So an important part about your bar is making sure you put your bar away nice and clean, you rinse it with fresh water, maybe pop these out, make sure there's not any gritty sand in there so those have been working, keep those things working really nice. Now you can see the bar end has a, a soft rubber end to it, so that's gonna stop the bar from causing damage to your bodily person or your board, as well as gives you a spot to wind your lines. Down here at the end, we also have line winding bungees. That's pretty standard on everybody's bar, so you just have those down there so you can lock those lines off. Next big thing that I wanna talk about is the actual disconnection of the float. So one thing you're gonna notice about um, different bars is some people have a fully connected float in with their bar in, and some people are gonna have these separate kind of sausage style. Now we went with the sausage style because we found in our testing that when you do actually have a full on molded piece, it actually slows the turning speed of the kite. So by having this be able to move very freely in here, our turning speed um, is actually greatly increased. It's not just the speed, but the reactivity of the kite to that input of that turn. So that's a really important thing that is often overlooked. Now, if we slide this up, there's another little thing down under here we want to love to talk about. We have some knots hidden underneath there to allow you to adjust your bar if your bar comes out of tune. So most of the time, your center lines are gonna take the stretch, so you need to lengthen your rear lines. 
So these ones actually come rigged as short as they can. So you, you have a couple knots to adjust that length. Now that's an important thing, bar tuning. Maybe we can get into that in a how-to video if you're not sure how to do that. We have a couple resources on the internet, but that's really important to maintain your bar to make sure that your kite's flying good because an out-of-tune bar can make your kite feel really poorly. You might be blaming the kite when it's actually just your line lengths aren't quite all the same. So I'm gonna slide that back down right on over that leader line. Now you see we have um, coated leader lines here. That's to reduce the chance of it getting wrapped around your fingers or anything of abrasive resistance. So that kind of covers the bar, the cartridges, the floats, and the chicken loop and the tube. Up here, we keep going up. We have a stainless steel polished um, cleat. That's our trim strap or our D-power strap. So simply by pulling it in, it has a really smooth action. This stainless steel low friction cleat combined with this really smooth pulley up here really make this D-power action extremely smooth and easy to do. Simply by pulling the line out of the cleat, I can let it out or I can cleat it off and a little bit of kiting pressure will set that line into the cleat. Now, we also have a little Velcro on here so that as you depower your kite, you can go ahead and Velcro it so it stays in place because as these things get long, let's say you're really riding way overpowered, you should probably go in and get your nine meter, but you're, you really want to send it on your 12. If you have this much depower, you know, there's always a chance that one of those could get wrapped around your outside lines. And we all know that that's a dangerous situation. So we really want to encourage people if they're depowering their kite to go ahead and utilize this feature of Velcro right here to keep yourself safe and keep that all hassle free out of your way. Another important thing up here, um, for those of you in a school application or someone who does have to service their bar, we go, changed our construction technique a little bit and we put a lark's head here instead of fully stitching this line to the center line that runs through this tube. What this allows you to do is to service this bar a lot easier. You don't have to deconstruct the bottom end of the bar to get all this stuff apart. You can actually just take this lark's head off, take off the top part and all this bar starts to come apart. So those of you that need to maybe service this for some particular reason, or you wear out your um, D power line, I'm not sure quite. I've had my bars for a couple years, mine have never worn out, but maybe you ran it over the concrete or something, you just need a little replacement. We have the ability to do that easily. Um, as I said, we have our bungee flagging line. This is under bungee load so that as you depower, this thing stays nice and tight and you don't have any slop down here in the chicken loop. That's really important. And our last really important piece is up here. We have uh, a new piece on our lines called the high Y adjuster. It is a plastic and um, anodized aluminum piece. And it essentially is a, a piece that allows you to decide where on your lines you want that center line to separate, that Y. We call it the high Y or the low Y. So by moving this piece up or down on your lines, you can decide, do I want it at the standard setting where it splits right at the pulley, or do I want to ride it you know, one to three to five meters away from myself? Now for me, I like to ride mine about a meter away from myself, about where a good GoPro line mount angle would be. I feel like that gives it a little bit more stability and nice turning response on the bar. It actually increases the bar pressure a little bit. So for my style of riding, I like to always know where the kite is. I like it to be really giving me feedback and input. So I like to ride that with a little bit more bar pressure. And I think that's a really great feature for those of you that want to adjust how your kite feels. It's a really easy way for you to get a different feel out of, out of the same kite. And we're gonna finish that all off with our, um, FL50 flying lines, they're from Teifelberger. They're the best lines on the market. They have the least stretch, they last the longest, and they have the best coatings to keep them durable from the salt, sand, and UV. So those lines have a really long life, and I think a lot of people overlook that part of the bar. They want all the guts and bells and whistles, but to have a good set of lines on your bar is also really important. Um, because it's what you know keeps your bar in tune and, and it kind of is what connects you to your kite. So you got to have some good componentry there. And so that's kind of the MC V3 in a nutshell. You know, we've updated the Lubrizol too. We've added the high Y adjustment. We have um, two different sizes. We have the serviceable parts. We've kind of retooled this a little bit to make sure it fits to the ISO standards and made sure it's really easy to use and easy to understand that what side is left, what side is right, really clear and straightforward. It's light and it's simple and it's the MCV3.